Ladies and gentlemen, for our closing plenary, we have our five co-chairs with us. And I think they say that short endings are sweet endings. And it's probably difficult to have a very short ending given the amount of inspiration we, have fe we feel after the last 48 hours of deliberations. And I hope it would not be immodest to say this meeting was truly historic. And it really was a great pleasure to have our co-chairs, as well as all of you, the government of Myanmar, uh, and all the participants uh, who took part in this. To keep, however, the ending short and sweet, what I'd like to do is to ask each of the co-chairs on the panel to, to share with us, amongst those many inspirations you had, amongst the many conversations you had with other participants, the contributions you made to the sessions in which you partook, what would be the one inspiration you feel most compelled to share when you're back in the office on Monday, off to the next destination for your next business engagement, or perhaps even at home with the family? And uh, what do you feel really captures what you took away from the World Economic Forum in East Asia in Myanmar? So, John, if I could begin with you and sure. your inspiration. I think that <clears throat> when I look at the work that needs to be done in East Asia and in Myanmar, I believe it's about balance. I think it's about balancing hardware, physical assets, infrastructure with, with software, capability, capacity building, and finance. I think it's about balancing the need for speed and responsible progress with a, with a measured approach. Uh, small can become big and replicable. I think it's about balancing the need to target the best with the need to compromise and make trade-offs as we search for the right energy policy uh, that recognize that that's being done in a hundred countries around the world and there is no right energy policy. I think it's also about balancing a respect for history and precedence with the need to change and prepare for the future. So whether it's a company or a country, I think that the, the balance is required in order to make responsible, sustainable progress. And I'd, I'd like to congratulate the, the World Economic Forum because I think in addition to other things that has, have been accomplished here, you've, you've created hundreds of new ambassadors for Myanmar who will travel back to their home countries and cities and think differently about this wonderful country. Thank you very much. And that certainly is very inspiring. You spoke about the, the energy policy empowering the growth of both Myanmar as well as the region. Mr. Ramadurai, I think you thought a lot about and contributed a lot about the energy of the people here, the human capital of the country, and it is one of the demographically youngest countries in the region. Um, what are the inspiring thoughts that you leave this meeting with? I think, first of all, I must uh, compliment the Myanmar government and its citizens for hosting the World Economic Forum, which was an unbelievable event. The opportunities for the youth based on the demographic profile is just immense and it doesn't come every day. And you must seize that moment to make a difference to the people of the future generations and the current generation which are growing up and going to be experiencing that. So the opportunity when I look at it, we must look at it as a long-term opportunity rather than immediately taking something away. It has to be on the basis of uh, social inclusion, financial inclusion, political in inclusion, and ecological sustainability, anything which we do. And the message I will take away is participate in the transformation of this country, participate for the long term, engage with the youth, and ensure that the whole region benefits from this whole experience. I think it can be done, but we must all be prepared to bring in technology in a big way and adopt technology for transformation of all the kinds I talked about. Thank you, Mr. Ramadurai. When we think of the energetic youth, when we think of 60 million people in Myanmar and 600 million people in ASEAN, 
I think one of the aspirations for a country like Myanmar, which is becoming more integrated in the region and more integrated in the world, is the desire to have contact uh, with others in the region. Tony, your company does a lot of that by bringing the people of ASEAN together. So what are the thoughts that you leave this summit on connecting the region and enhancing connectivity in the region looking ahead? Well, I think um, for me, as I, I said earlier, you know, I believed in ASEAN probably before ASEAN believed in itself. And uh, firstly, I want to congratulate the World Economic Forum for giving the uh, presence and the uh, recognition to ASEAN. So for me, it's a, it's a final piece of the puzzle to get Myanmar into this uh, wonderful group of 10 countries of 600 million people. I've, you know, always people have focused on China and India, and now there's a lot more focus on uh, Southeast Asia and ASEAN. And with Myanmar, 60 million people, I think it's a fantastic time for ASEAN. And providing the connectivity and making ASEAN a smaller place, I think will be a big step forward. Uh, we focus on tourism a lot and the inter-ASEAN tourism that can happen uh, throughout this period. So it's a very exciting period for us and tourism is a great way of eradicating poverty in the right way. There are obviously dangers in some of it, but well managed. It's a fantastic way of creating jobs and creating economic growth and connectivity, as we all know, will provide economic growth. So I'm thrilled that Myanmar is in here. I'm thrilled that ASEAN is in a wonderful state to go forward. Just one point before I end on a completely different thing. I have to applaud uh, the Myanmar's people and the government. You know, to see the head of opposition and a senior member of government on the same stage debating, I think shows a lot of the rest of the world how to do it. It was uh, immensely powerful for me in many countries. I think it wouldn't happen. And I think for the Myanmar's people, that's an amazing step forward. And uh, again, well done to the WEF for providing the platform. But it takes a lot of courage, and that gives me tremendous confidence in the way this country is going to move forward. And in fact, while everyone was talking about lessons to be learned uh, from other ASEAN neighbors and other countries from Myanmar, I think Myanmar showed us today uh, many things that we can learn in terms of openness, transparency, and trying to do its best for its people. Helen, Tony spoke about courage, and I think part of the courage that is needed is not only to initiate transformation, but also to see in the challenges ahead the opportunity to invest in a more promising future for all the people. And uh, you, of course, are giving a lot of thought uh, with your organization on how that can be achieved. Um, what would be some of the thoughts that you leave now after 40 hours of deliberations here on how we can create that pathway, knowing that no one actor alone, whether the corporate sector or the public sector, can close those gaps uh, alone. And, and you were the court chair amongst us that represented uh, the important uh, social development agenda. Well, I think partnerships are incredibly important, and others have underlined the importance of ASEAN in lifting its members, and the latest member to be lifted is Myanmar. I've got great faith in the regionalism of ASEAN making a big difference here as it's made progressively with new entrants to the uh, organisation. So ASEAN, uh, the business partners, the big foundations, the traditional development partners, the international organizations, I think we can all pile in behind uh, what's happening. I, I think for me there's been two stories of transformation here. The Myanmar one we're very focused on, but also I've been very impressed by the, the messages the President of the Philippines has brought about the prioritization to tackling corruption, uh, impunity, uh, to emphasizing uh, youth potential and, and jobs, and of course the, the courage uh, with the responsible parenthood initiative that he's taken. So I think that's a, a very good introduction to uh, the forum going to the Philippines uh, next year. Uh, for Myanmar, I feel that uh, a lot of boats have been pushed out, a lot of reform boats, and they're, they're in midstream and the current's going. 
and it's uh, now a question of prioritising and sequencing the, the, the reforms. There's a lot to do. There's a, there's a lot to catch up. Uh, but uh, if there can be a very clear strategy now around where the quick wins are, where the investments need to be made for the longer term, the strengthening of the institutions, the infrastructure, really laying the foundations for sustained and shared uh, prosperity here. But uh, certainly the forum has exceeded my expectations, the degree of openness with which we've been greeted here. You have to pinch yourself to remember that it's not yet three years since Aung San Suu Kyi walked away from house arrest. You know, th that's how recent it is, and to see her able to take her place uh, as an opposition leader in debate, I think, is marvellous. I've been an opposition leader. I know how tough it is in a democracy, <laughs> so I know how tough it is to forge this role coming out of where Myanmar has been. But I really congratulate uh, WEF on having had the courage to come here. Uh, and say it is the right time to engage, and I think all of us who have been here absolutely agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Kojima-san, uh, I remember you saying yesterday about opening the first office here in 1964, and Japan has a long partnership uh, with Myanmar, and uh, you, of course, would like to see the infrastructure of this country brought to the level um, that allows it to be better integrated with both ASEAN as well as East Asia, uh, and to take its rightful role uh, in economic growth. Uh, what are your thoughts now looking ahead in terms of the future and strengthening the role of Myanmar within the region? Well, uh, firstly, uh, I would like to express my sincere uh, appreciation to all the participants this time, and also the government of Myanmar and the people of Myanmar and uh, Professor Schwab and all the uh, WF staff. And uh, maybe uh, I think this is the first time in recent memory that uh, such a large international conference has been held in Myanmar with more than 900 people from 55 countries, which shows the amount of attention and importance being given to Myanmar. And during this conference, uh, I was very much delighted uh, that uh, we were able to have a very active and fruitful discussions. And uh, particularly, you said about, say, infrastructure, and uh, also three keywords. One is the infrastructure, but uh, agricultural industries, and education, and maybe healthcare. Those are the keywords when I was involved in the discussions. And uh, through our, this discussion, I realized once again the growing importance of Asia's economy, especially ASEAN. And uh, I believe it is very important for each country to embrace diversity, avoid critical conflicts, and make further development possible. Well, say, frankly speaking, uh, before I came over here, I heard that now the time of rainy season here in Myanmar. However, these three days, no rain, <laughs> rather than, say, fine weather. And uh, frankly speaking, I was a bit surprised. But now this might be a very good sign for Myanmar future, and uh, as well as for the future of the ASEAN countries. And uh, therefore, I do believe the Myanmar future is uh, very promising. And uh, therefore, as far as the Myanmar, we wish to see uh, this nation integrated into Asia's political and economic network to fully realize its uh, potential. Japan, of course, we are very much prepared to make a contribution to Asia's development in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kojima-san. Well, if I first give a round of applause again to our co-chairs and then leave a personal inspiration. Twelve months ago when we announced at the last East Asia meeting in Bangkok, there were a lot of skeptics uh, when we said that we will hold our first ever World Economic Forum on East Asia in Myanmar. But the inspiration to me comes from all the members of the government of Myanmar, like Minister Uso Thin, who worked so closely with us, uh, hand in hand, 
since that time and now uh, to make the impossible possible. It also was a lot of my colleagues at the World Economic Forum. I'd like to identify one of them in particular, Ann Katrin, who's known in Myanmar as Masenmya, uh, who stationed herself here and really committed to uh, work uh, with all of our friends to make this happen. And I'm also very inspired by all of you. No one would have thought we could set a record here in Nepito, but uh, over a thousand of you came and were well accommodated uh, I think we're very delighted by the, the warmth of all of our hosts here and as well as for the very frank and candid exchanges that we could have. And that shows an open-mindedness at a very critical inflection point for all the people of Myanmar and ASEAN. So on that, I'd like to wish you a safe journey home or to your next destination and really hope that we can look forward to seeing all of you again next year when we convene in Manila. Thank you.